So welcome back to the continuation part of storage virtualization technology. Storage virtualization. So what is meaning of storage virtualization? Let me explain first. In general, you know that if you have a system, the system has, okay, the system has RAM, CPU, okay, hard disk, everything will be inside of this system okay and with that resources okay like example ram cpu hard disk with this information we are going to install the operating system here on that operating system we are running applications or services huh? okay so this is a old traditional method so nowadays nowadays we are using this type of virtualized environment this type of virtualized environment in this particular in this particular server also okay similar kind of structure is there similar kind of structure is there okay ram cpu hard disk but what is the problem here all vms will get stored on this particular hard disk am i right yeah every virtual machine will get stored in this particular hard disk every virtual machine will store on this hard disk am i right Suppose if the host is down, VMs will down and this hard disk cannot be accessible. Suppose if hard disk is down, VMs also get affected and host is completely not manageable because even this particular okay even this particular okay what even this particular esx server operating system also running on this hard disk so hard disk is a main uh, unit in this particular server so you are managing this hard disk inside of the server and storing the ESX server operating system and uh, virtual machines data, it is not safe. In real time environment, it is not safe. So this is we called as, this is we called as, okay. local data store this is a local data store this is a local data store this local data store method is absolutely it is not suggestible for any real-time environment Okay, so what is the alternate solution? So let's explain about the same infrastructure with the storage technologies, with the storage technologies. 
instead of you are storing that data into the local storage, you can maintain the data into storage technology servers. So if any data you want to manage or maintain remotely, there are two types of, there are two types of, uh, no, there's three types of storage technologies are available. One is network attached to storage. Okay, one is network attached to storage, NAS. One is network attached storage, NAS. Another one is SAN storage area network storage area network and another one is nfs network file system network file system so today i'm going to talk about san i don't want to be spend much time to explain about nas and uh, nfs creating the architecture i'll directly showing the nas how look like nas storage how look like i'll show you so see this guys this type of devices will be there in this devices hard disk will get installed hard disk will get installed and these client machines will connecting through ethernet adapter and accessing the storage from this NAS server. Yes, smaller companies they are using this type of NAS, even bigger companies also using. So you need to buy this bare bone, you need to buy this bare bone and in this bare bone we need to install the hard disk. Without hard disk it will come. Only this cost is this much and even some small hard disk they will provide, that's it. But additionally, if you need anything, you need to buy an extra. Is it clear? Network attached to storage. Network attached to storage. So, now, please come here. This is a NAS storage. You can please see here network attached storage your laptops your desktops your servers connecting through lan and accessing the nas storage and store the data and retrieve the data this is one type of model network attached to storage with the help of ip address the data will get access So let's go to the next one, NFS storage. So NFS storage. So what is meaning of NFS? NFS actually is not a storage technology. It's a storage file system. It's a storage file system. So I don't want to explain here this concept. Local storage and remote storage level. That's why I'm, I'm helping here. You can see this. There is a one file server will be there. Okay, like this. There is a one file server will be there. Through network, the storage will get access. Okay, storage will get access by the clients. So this server will be operating okay, to manage the particular storage and providing some amount of storage to the client. This is network file server. This is a network file server. This is a 
network file server. So even Windows Server, we can turn as a network file share server, but not a network attached storage. Windows Server by default, uh, there is a service is called Network File Services. So we can install the particular role, the server, whatever the storage is there, we can create a volume and we can attach to the client. Now I'm going to the third model. Sand storage. Now how become is a sand storage? So how look like sand storage? Where is that good diagram? Okay, perfect. I think looks good. You can see here. <coughs> Whatever the servers you are maintaining, these servers are connecting to SAN device. SAN is separately is maintained. So this SAN will be connecting with the SAN switch. Okay, SAN switch. So with the help of SAN switch, you are able to communicate here. This is the basic SAN configuration. So now I'll explain very detailed information okay you can look at here let's think about this is a SAN server. So in this server, there are some hard disks are available. Okay. So in this SAN server, okay, the hard disk, the volume will be created like this the volumes will get created. These volumes we called as LUNs. LUNs. So LUN1, LUN2. So this type of volumes will get created. A logical unit number. So the LUN has some capacity based on the customer requirement. Like a 1 TB, like a 500 GB like that based on the customer requirement the storage will get be allocating with this logical volume this is called LUN so now as per our requirement as per our requirement so here the server is there right so now I'm taking this configuration here Now you can see here, this is our server. Huh? This is our ESX server. <coughs> now these VMs I need to store on this particular LUN. But how will we get communicated? Suppose if the SAN is two types, that SANs are two types. Basically, SANs are two types. ISKZ SAN 
and fiber channel SAN. FC SAN, IceKG SAN. There are two types of SANs are available. Okay. SANs are two types. IceKG Okay. IceKG SAN is a one type. Another one is FC SAN. So just now I explain about uh, SAN switches. So based on the SAN, we will get connected. If suppose IceKZ SAN, the normal network switch will get able to communicate it. Okay, network switch. Okay, network switch is there. Okay, network switch. With that network switch, we can communicate each other. This is a network switch. Suppose this is a iSCSI network. So I use a normal, okay, normal IP switch I'll maintain. Normal Ethernet switch I'll maintain. Ethernet switch I'll maintain. Ethernet Ethernet switch and suppose if you are using fiber channel we need to use what switch we need to use FC switch we need to maintain FC switch we need to maintain so fiber cable will get used and fiber switch will be used. Suppose this LAN, you can see here, this is a LAN you created here, this is a LAN you created here. Suppose if the ESX server wants to communicate to this LAN, to connect with the IQ and address because of IceKZ SAN. Because of a IceKZ SAN. Because of the IQ and address will be there for every learn. Okay, every learn it is a it is a IQ and address will be there. IQ and address. IceKZ qualified number. IceKZ qualified number will be there. With this able to communicate each other. Suppose if FC SAN is there, okay, if FC SAN is there, FC SAN they will use a WW number. There are two types of SANs. One is FC SAN, another one is IceKC SAN. So based on the type, you will connect the particular storage by using IQN or WWN number. So now this particular server will communicate to this switch and with this switch able to communicate here, IQN address is a main, this storage can be accessible. Suppose if you are a FC SAN, Okay, FC SAN and FC switch will be used. FC SAN will get access through WWN number. So everybody is understand now. This is a detailed information about the connectivity. This is a very detailed information about connectivity. Now, I'm going to create a SAN server in next five minutes. 
now I'm going to create a SAN server in next five minutes. So I have a Windows server. There are so many brands are available. Okay, like a Starwind or Open SAN. Um, I forgot them. <coughs> I forgot them. Seagate, Dell, EMC, NetApp, there's so many brands are there. Okay. Now I'm going to install I'm going to install Starwind SAP. You can see here this is my server in this server I'm going to install Starwind SAN this is my Starwind application I'm going to install here next accept next 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 install so now here if you want to install iSCSI service should be installed because of this is iSCSI service iSCSI SAN iSCSI service should be running on this server then only we can install so go to services.msc in any windows machine microsoft iSCSI service will be there see iSCSI service will be there Microsoft iSCSI initiator service will be there this is by default stop I'm going to start here okay now it is started now I'm going here and click OK now I'm going to install the this particular service the software iSCSI server so successfully installed and install the drivers also iSCSI drivers any updated drivers not required because of already is there and click finish now the iSCSI management console is opening star window iSCSI management console is opened so once it is opened you can see the right bottom corner is a called of system tray so here the icon will be running so that means star wind is working fine either you can double click here either you can double click here so guys this is a star wind sam so with this Starwind SAN, you can store your Microsoft Exchange data, mail server data, Microsoft Hyper-V, virtualization, VMware, virtualization, SQL database, Oracle database. So this type of popular brands, you can use this. Yes, this is a very popular brand, okay, in real-time environment, but you are not managing it. That is managed by storage administrator, just I'm helping you to understand the storage technology how it was built understand it's clear so next this is a management console and you need to connect the Starwind server Starwind server means wherever you install the Starwind service that is a Starwind server so now once you click here and it will ask hey where is a Starwind in the same server, I installed Starwind services also. Starwind server and Starwind console. So both are different, different. And we are managing the Starwind server. And this server IP address is basically, okay, 192.168.1.100. And click OK. Now it is connected. Now right click, connect. The password is s t a r w i n d starwind that's a password for all our lower cases successfully connected so the license is required i already purchased the license okay that means this is a license file now this license file i'm going to upload click ok install license 
load it from C drive load it from C drive this is a file and click open and click OK successfully license is installed so guys now it is a free edition license type and actually I purchased uh, this one with uh, for a training purpose okay training purpose I have taken this license this license is not selling by anyone I'm actually uh, representing for whenever I'm working the companies I will sponsoring my time for promoting some brands okay so definitely somebody is required some promoting some brands so like that so I was participated uh, uh, 10 years back uh, for promoting this product in tech seminars uh, tech exhibitions in Hyderabad so it was an uh, high techs uh, is there right in that area we will be conducting two days seminars like that in that seminar we are promoting the product with a small set of lab okay they will provide and they will provide the license that time I have taken this license okay I copied it so uh, that's why this complete product with me <coughs> so even I can run my business with this license I can run my business also okay so now with this mostly I used for setting up VMware environment okay so very long back I was teaching a VMware technology that time I'm very much used this technology this software but nowadays I was not teaching you can imagine almost five years I was not touch this software today only I just copied and I'm installing here okay almost five years gone so nowadays the most of the people are asking in interview uh, uh, what type of storage technology they're asking some questions so again I have a restarting here so I'm explaining about this concept so now the Starwind SAN server perfectly we have set up okay Starwind SAN server perfectly we have set up okay so now this is a model this is a model now we need to create a LUN okay now we need to create a LUN in this server how to create a LUN I'll show you step by step you can please see here expand the server targets so targets is nothing but LUNs right click add a target target name example LUN01 this is a target number this is called target name IQN I, I said right so if you are using IQN sir iSCSI uh, SAN the particular LUN name will be identifying with the IQN address so now you can see this is a IQN address iSCSI qualified name so this name by using this we are able to connect from the VMware ESX server click on next now if you'll ask uh, hey do you are creating this particular LUN in which type of storage so hard disk optical drive tape drives hard disk is normal hard disk you know right optical drive means CD DVD even CD DVD also we can create a uh, LUNs and tape drives some kind of cassettes will be there magnetic tape in that area so optical drive tape drives we are not using only hard disk and this is a physical the physical means SATA PATA ride this will be is a logged means we need to purchase a license additional license I need to purchase so this license they are not provided to me I am going to use a basic virtual so because of virtual hard disk I am going to create this virtual hard disk there are two types will be there one is the image file one is the RAM file if you're creating RAM file entire the disk will be stored on the RAM so uh, I don't have much uh, RAM here so mostly this type of RAM we can use for uh, SAP based applications okay now I don't require image file is required and now I'm going to create a new virtual disk next what is the capacity you are going to create guys I'm going to create only 20 GB okay 20 GB is fine sorry not here the size is 20 GB I'm going to create and where we need to create 
in the C drive, I'm going to create one folder, LUNS. In this LUNS, name is LUN01. Click OK. Now I make it compressed. So unnecessarily, you don't want to paste our data. It will compress the data. It will save our information. And click Next. Image file cannot be created. What happened? Image file cannot be created. Show the logs. There is no enough space. So then I'll make it 10 GB. Yeah, okay, 10 GB only is there in that server. Free space. Now click on next, 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 finish. So now successfully LUN is created. LUN is created. There is no target missions are getting connected here. Now coming back to my, I'm going to open the browser. Okay. I'm going to connect my vCenter server. This 10 GB volume I'm going to connect to the ESX server. With the 10 GB volume I created now for a practice purpose. This 10 GB I'm going to, okay, connect here. So 108 my vCenter server. I don't want to connect here, sorry. I already open. This is my vCenter server. Now coming to the data stores. So here data stores, here is the storage is there. In this storage, okay, in this storage, In this storage, I have only one storage is available. Is only one storage is available. Uh, with this one storage, I will be able to connect. So now I'm going to ESX server, root, password. This is my storage. Now this storage I need to connect. This is only local storage. I need to connect additional storage. First of all, go to adapters. Here, software iSCSI adapter I need to install, enable, and we need to provide the alias name. So, automatically it will giving some details and click save the configuration. So, now one software iSCSI adapter is installed. Okay, VMHBA 65. VMHBA means virtual machine host bus adapter. That means there is a connector. So this is iSCSI software adapter. When I click here, okay, configure iSCSI. Okay, configure iSCSI. So now here we need to go for a dynamic model, add a dynamic target. Click on add a dynamic target like this so i want to dim i want to remove one this is a one adapt adder scissor we need to connect so what is a sans server ip address anybody can tell me what is a sans server ip address what is a sans server ip address 192.168.1.100 it is communicating with what is the port number 3260. So now come here. It is showing here, right? Now 192.168.1.100 and save the configuration. Now with this adapter, it will successfully communicate to the SAN server. <coughs> now come to the data store. Now come to the data store new data store create a new vmfs volume from from where from this storage so guys 10 gb we created right in the sand storage see the 10 gb will be showing here you can give the number 
LUN01 we can give. Click on next. Or you want to create entire the 10 GB? Yes. Entire 10 GB you want it. Click on next and finish. Yes. Now the LUN01 is created with the 10 GB. So next time, guys, when next time, so that means next time is don't create it in the LUN. Just I'm telling you. Normally, as per our scenario, we should not create the VMs on the local storage. When you're creating the virtual machine, when you're creating the virtual machine like this, okay, suppose demo one, suppose Windows and uh, 2019. Now storage will be select the LAN one. So data store one is a local storage. LAN zero one is a remote storage. So now here you can create your virtual machine. Now I'm creating just a dummy virtual machine for your information. Okay. So it will not create because of it won't support it. Otherwise, I'll just uh, delete this. The next I'll finish it for temporary purpose. See, the demo one machine is created. The demo one machine is created. Understand? So this is a way the machines are creating in the remote storage. You know how to create a remote storage by using SAN. Understand? So don't try to practice here. So watch this record multiple times. You'll get more knowledge. And in case of any doubts, please ask in the next session. Thank you very much.